All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo ThinkBook 15 G2 ITL. All right. Anyways, to take the screws out, it looks like we're going to be using a JIS-1 or possibly JIS-0. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to try the JIS-1 first. Okay, and yes, the JIS-1 is correct. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. It looks like these actually stay in place. Sometimes it's just the back screws, so make sure to check that they don't just fall out. Okay, these all seem to stay in place. Okay, it looks like all the screws stay in place, so you don't actually have to worry about it. Anyways, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, oh, it looks like this screw came out for some reason. Um, there's a little thing on it that makes it look like it should stay in place, but it popped out. Anyways, if this video helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right. So it looks like all these screws that towards the front where it opens actually come out. They don't actually stay in place. So, yeah. All right. Anyways, now that we got those screws out, I put them all in a line so I can keep track of them. All right, we're gonna pop the bottom cover off and usually the best way to do that, open it up like that, find your, the gap here, I use my fingernails, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push on the palm rest, don't push on the touchpad trackpad, just on the palm rest. So I'll get my fingernails in and push like that. You can hear it clicks just like this. Okay, and then just work your way down. Again, don't push on the trackpad, so we're just going on the edges on the other side here okay just like this okay and there we go you can see we got all of that popped out then we're going to carefully close this back up turn this over to the side and then now since we have the gap i can get my fingernails in there and what we're going to do okay while i'm pulling this up i'm going to run my fingernail along there you can see it already popped up quite a bit on its own we're going to rotate this do the same thing on the other side okay hold this up and run my fingernail along there. You can see it pops up just like that. Then, if we're lucky, we can just kind of wiggle this and pop it off. Let's see here. This side. Okay, nope. Looks like it's going to be a little trouble. Um, there we go. Oh, I thought I was going to have to undo the screw a bit. Okay, and then we kind of just wiggle this as we kind of lift. There we go. This side's a little bit stuck here, so we got to be careful because this piece is um, the LAN port or whatever. Ethernet port is kind of in the way, so we're going to kind of just wiggle, slowly lift it, and there we go. We got the entire bottom cover off. This is what it looks like. Okay. Um, so you got all the clips and whatever. There's these foam pads and stuff under there. Okay, we're going to set that aside for now. So this computer is having issues. It's randomly blue screening. It turns out it's the RAM, so we're going to see if there's removable RAM to check here it looks like there might be one here you got the battery okay let me actually put this here so we can get a good screenshot okay so we're gonna get a or not a screenshot but thumbnail okay so that's good for the thumbnail we got a two and a half inch sata hard drive slot here but it looks like there's nothing actually in it let's go ahead and see if we can take that out okay same thing with the js1 screwdriver Again, keep all the screws in order. Again, they can be on and are different size, shape, and lengths. You don't want to mix them up. All right, so we got four screws holding this hard drive in place. And actually, um, there's no hard drive in here. Um, it seems there, it has a slot here if you want to add one, but there's it's empty. Okay, so we got those four screws out. We're going to just lift this up. Wiggle this. Actually, oh, there is a, wait, is there a hard drive or is this just a, or is this just a holder here? It's a little bit heavy, but this doesn't look like a hard drive. I think this is just like an empty metal plate. So we're gonna actually take this out. This piece is a bit difficult to remove here. You can see here, so there's not really anywhere to grab. Um, so if you're gonna remove this, be very careful. I kind of just grab this connector like with my thumbnail like that and my fingernail, and then we kind of just wiggle it as we pull. Okay, this is gonna be a little tricky. There we go. Okay, and you wanna be careful because that cable can be pretty fragile. All right, I don't know what this little one is. J, B, T, H, what? J, B, T, H, one. I don't know what that stands for. Anyways, this one is for the hard drive. This one has the HDD01. 
let's go ahead and take this out and see. It doesn't look like there's anything in here, but all right, we'll see. There's four screws holding this in place, so we're going to get those four screws out. Okay, pretty interesting, this thing here. All right, now that we've got those four screws out, let's see if we can lift this off and see what's underneath. Okay, so as you can see, this is just a placeholder. There's nothing actually here. I don't know why they used the solid metal piece for that, but uh, all right. And then this looks like it should pop out. How the heck do you get this thing out? I don't wanna just yank this wire off. Are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, they make this thing, I don't know. I'm gonna try with a thin, a very small flathead screwdriver and see if I can pry it up from here, okay. Okay, sounds like it's coming out, there we go. So I don't know if they put some glue or what, it, I don't think it should have been that hard to get this out, but there we go. Okay, after prying this piece with a flathead screwdriver, we got this out. You could possibly pull it out by just lifting it up, but the way it was stuck, I feel like it would rip the cable. So don't try and do that unless it comes out easily. Okay, we're going to put this back because we're not using it. Um, yeah, even after doing that, no, this is very difficult to remove. So get a small tool, flathead screwdriver or whatever. Just get it in this little area here at the front of that connector and then pry that up okay that's the safest way I found okay just like that pry it up and there you go all right I wouldn't just yank on that cable because you'll probably end up breaking it and then this will be useless this is a stupid design I don't know why they didn't just put a little cut out here so you can push it with your hand um, but yeah all right let's go ahead and get this thing back on top okay dumb design but I mean, what are we going to do? We can't change the design. All right, anyways, let's get these four screws back in. Okay. <clears throat> so in this slot, you can put a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. I highly recommend a SSD if you're going to put something in there. Um, just for, this is more just for storage. Uh, the actual hard drive is a, or storage is a two and a half, sorry, not <laughs> M.2 PCIe NVMe. Um, but it's like the half size, the shorter type. So yeah, keep that in mind. You can see, oh, let me move this over. So you can see the SSD is right here and there's also a warranty sticker on top or not technically not a warranty sticker. It's a tamper evidence sticker. So in some states or countries or whatever, um, you're actually legally allowed to take stuff out without it voiding warranties. Um, I believe California is one of those states. Um, so it depends where you live. In some places, again, you can modify and upgrade, and technically they can't void your warranty unless that is what damaged or killed your computer. Okay, anyways, we're going to put these screws back in here. I don't know if you saw, there's this big cable here that connects to the motherboard there. And that's for the SD card slot. The oh, I'll wait till I get these screws back in, but... It's for the SD card slot, HD, or sorry, USB port, and the Ethernet LAN. Um, there's also a bunch of other stuff connected to it, so let me put this and then show you that closer. Okay, so this connects there. These have flip latches to disconnect that cable if you need to. All right, and there's a connector here. This looks like it goes to the fingerprint sensor on this board. Do they label this? Not really. Okay, CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock battery. Make sure to take note of which wire is going where. The red one's going towards the outside and the black one's going towards the inside of the laptop. It's very important. All right, so you got these two cables here. I'm not exactly sure what's what. I'm assuming one is for, yeah. I think one is for the fingerprint. This is usually the fingerprint um, sensor or not sensor, but control board or whatever. And then I think this is for the power button itself. Okay, you got the wireless card here. There's a little plastic thing on top holding the antennas down. Um, so you will have to peel this up to get the antennas out. You go from the tail, pull it up, and it should pop off. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, you can watch some of my other videos. I show it on a lot of them. 
Um, so yeah, just go through my videos and you should be able to find one where I actually pull the antennas off. You got the fan connector here. Looks like the fan just has two screws here, one there and one up here. And then I think, I think that should be enough to remove this, but you will have to unroute all these wires that are going along. All right. Then we got here, keyboard connector here with the same thing, flip latch, keyboard backlight connector here, same thing, flip latch. Battery connectors here. Um, you will have to remove the screws to pull the battery out. If you're wondering, battery model number is right there. L19D3PDA. All right. There you go. And you got this connector here. Um, this is the touchpad or trackpad connector, it looks like. Got the speaker connector here, which connects down to this speaker. Then a wire goes along to connect this speaker. Okay. Then you got the LCD LVDS connector here very important before you mess with this connector you do want to disconnect the battery so um, take the screws out lift the battery up what I do is I get one finger underneath the battery holding the bottom of the cable and one on top and then I kind of wiggle and pull it together like that I sandwich it between my fingers and pull it out all right after you disconnect the battery open the laptop press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds and then after that, you can go ahead and safely remove this. Very important. Um, if you're trying to remove this, what you do is you pull on this. And then usually pulling this isn't enough. So I get underneath with my fingernail and help pop it up on a corner. But make sure you're just popping up this connector and not the um, bottom part of the board. All right. Um, here's the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. You can put a full-sized one. Um, you will have to remove the screw here. Then it pops up at an angle. And then you can go ahead and pull it out. So it's very, it's going to be somewhat similar to the RAM, except instead of clips, it's just screws. So let's go ahead and see. Hopefully this RAM is removable because it's giving blue screen or it's giving a bunch of errors. So it's causing blue screens. All right. So you saw I lift it up underneath here and you want to be careful because if you just pull up, you're going to bend this. So we're going to go to the other side over here and we're going to try and lift it up over here as well. Okay. So just like this, pop it up. Come on. Why is it stuck so strong? There we go. And then we're going to go to this corner and do the same. All right. So we got this all popped up and there's actually only one stick of RAM here. So I hope there's RAM built into the board because if not, I'm going to have to get a replacement stick of RAM. This is eight gig PC4 3200 AA. All right. Actually, they brought me two of the same laptops. So if this is bad, I could technically just take a stick of RAM from the other one. But anyways, the RAM comes out like that, and to put it back, you put it at an angle, and then you cl click it down. But again, this RAM is most likely bad, so I'm going to leave it out. GPU or CPU is here. There's no GPU here. Um, I think some models will probably have a GPU mounted here with a different kind of heatsink. Um, but yeah, there's not really much else here. Let's go ahead and power this up and see if it starts up without... Um, sorry, without the RAM stick. If it starts up without the RAM stick, then there's also built-in RAM. And it looks like it's not going to start up. Caps lock light just flashed. And then escape light is permanently on. And nothing is happening. So, oh, actually. Oh no, I don't know if they have this information. I'm going to have to ask them. So, the one bad thing about this design Okay, because the RAM is built in on like one slot of the RAM is built in, that means if for some reason this stick of RAM wasn't the issue, then it's actually the RAM that's built into the motherboard. And that's going to be very bad because that means um, basically your computer will be dead because the motherboard, the RAM on the motherboard is toast. Anyways, I'm going to put this uh, little cover back on. So you want to make sure to line up these pieces with these little clippy thingies here because that's what holds it in place. So we're going to line it up. Make sure you line it up at the top corner here and then the side over here. Okay. Very important. So line it up. Click it down. I don't even know why they have this metal plate here. I think this is bad because as you can see, this metal thing can move around. Usually it's like a complete box. This one, it's like hollow here. So there's nothing helping hold this up. So I don't know if vibration caused it to touch this and maybe that's what damaged the RAM. Hopefully it's this stick of RAM and not the RAM on the motherboard 
because if it is the RAM on the motherboard, then we're pretty much screwed. But anyways, I'm going to put this back together for now. I'll leave this stick of RAM out um, because I do need to uh, get the BitLocker code from the customer. And then we'll continue doing tests after that. All right. Anyways, we're going to get this lined up. Okay. And then we're just going to click all of this back in just like that. Push it all back in. Can be a little tricky. Okay. And then we're just going to work our way down the sides here. Make sure everything clips in. Okay. Work our way here. Sometimes you got to like push at an angle, not just straight down. So keep that in mind. If it's not going in, it helps to kind of push it in towards the center because the clips clip in that way. Okay. So there we go. We got all the screws back in. I think I didn't take anything else out. We're just going to put these screws back tighten the screws back down and that's pretty much all there is to this model hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well and if it helped you save a bunch of money again please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living even if all you can contribute is like a cent um, even that is helpful it might not sound like it but if a thousand people that said, oh, I can't even contribute like anything like a cent, um, if they contributed, that would be like 10 bucks, right? <laughs> so yeah, every little bit helps. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I get the rest of these screws back in, but we're good to go. All right, I'm going to run a RAM test, a MEM test um, to see if the RAM is better without that stick hopefully i can run it without with the bitlocker thing still there um what you do is you press f12 to boot i turned off secure boot um so that's no longer there um because otherwise i can't really boot my um usb thing uh so basically i'm gonna plug in uh my usb drive here right and you can actually press enter on boot to see the whole boot up, like how to get to the BIOS and everything. But I just want to boot my USB, so I'm pressing F12. And you can see it lets me choose the boot options. I'm going to boot my Sandus Cruiser Fit. And it looks like it's working. So we're going to do mem test here. It's going to start up, and then it's going to start checking the RAM. And if it shows no red stuff, I think we should be good to go. I'll see if I can get another stick of RAM from the other one. Um, if that's the case and yeah, all right. So we'll let this go a few more seconds <clears throat> and I think we got, we got a good sign here because so far there's no red stuff. Usually mem test finds errors really early on. So I think we're good. And maybe the other one, they have another one, exactly same model. It's not turning on at all. Like it gets lights and then it shuts off. It could also be bad RAM. So again, I have a feeling it might be that metal shield that's there. Probably vibrated and touched the thing and damaged it. Um, but yeah, it looks like this is good. So pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.